Welcome to Live Streams Online. Happy Easter, everybody. Jesus is risen. The stone has been rolled away. In the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 6 and 7, it says this. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. What a great day to be alive. My name is Rod and I'm the Senior Minister at Livestreams and I want to extend a huge welcome to everyone, but particularly to our guests and our visitors. Thanks for joining us online today. During the week, we thought it would be awesome to hear from some of the family. Let's roll that footage. Hey boys, boys and, boys and, and girls, happy Easter for you. I miss you very I much. I miss the lot. I miss the chocolate lollies! Hey live streams, I just want to say I hope you guys are doing well. I miss seeing you guys on the Sunday services and at the church. But apart from that, I hope you guys have an amazing Easter weekend. I hope you can spend this time really reflecting on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as well, I hope you guys just really have a great weekend. And if I can leave with any encouragement, just keep praying, remain positive, remain optimistic, and just keep seeking God. See you guys. Hey everybody, it's Petra. Hi, it's Russell Gordon here. <laughs> Saying hi. Um, just to let you know, we're missing being in community with everybody and um, singing praise and worship songs together. It's great to hear them on the internet, but it's awesome when we hear everyone's voices. And happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Yeah. 
have a great time with your family. Um, yeah, those you can mix with. And oh, what have we been enjoying doing? Um, DIY. Yeah, yeah. We've always liked DIY. You come up with an idea, and I do it. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah. So Russell's been busy. I've been coming up with the ideas. He's been doing them. See ya. Bye. Hi, church. Happy Easter. May the God of hope and peace and joy be with you during this season of isolation. I pray and hope that all of us will grow deep in God during this season of isolation and staying at home. God bless. See ya. Hey, Livestreams family. It's Ashlyn here. Just wanted to wish you all a happy Easter um, and let you know a bit about what's been going on in my life lately. Um, so a lot of you will know that I've been studying in Canada this year on a uni exchange. Um, which unfortunately got cut short because of the coronavirus. Um, so now I'm back home in Bustleton, I'm out of um, quarantine um, and I have also just got engaged. So yeah, that's what's new with me. Thanks family. That was mint seeing all of your beautiful faces. Thanks Ashlyn. Great to hear from you and congratulations on your engagement. That's super exciting. Well, Family, let's continue our worship today by giving towards our mission, which is to help people, our friends, our family, and our community find and follow Jesus. Please also don't forget our C2C family. They need our support more than ever, and, and also our Corona Care Appeal. We have a number of ways that you can give. You can give by electronic transfer. You can give via the Livestreams website and don't forget push pay on your smartphone. Mike has just made a, a push pay video so that you can set that up. You can find that in our YouTube channel. For more info on giving, click the link below. God bless you for your generosity. Now for just a quick couple of announcements. For all of our vision partners, our annual general meeting will be held on Sunday the 19th of April as an online Zoom meeting at 12.30 p.m. All our vision partners have received an email with all of the details. Uh, the annual report can be viewed on our website. See the link below or send us an email if you have any questions. I wanna also remind you of our Corona Care Initiative. It basically consists of three things. The first thing is need help. This is about helping people in our community who are in need who, or who are in isolation. The second thing is want to help. This is about encouraging you to serve in some way, getting your hands dirty. And the third thing is want to give. That's all about encouraging you to give to our appeal. All donations are tax deductible. Thanks to all who have generously contributed so far. If you want to, want to know more, just simply click on the link below. Let's now cross to Mandy and Beck, they have a couple of things that they would love to share with you. Hey family, I am so excited to tell you that we are going to be running our Living Well course as planned next month, but we're going to be doing it online via Zoom. This will be a great way to do it, and it'll be fun, I think, to connect online. For those who don't know, Living Well is a seven week course and it's all about wellness from a godly perspective and wellness for God's glory. We look at the five essentials of faith, food, fitness, focus and friends and all from biblical principles and a godly perspective as I mentioned. So I would love you to register for that. You can register online and I'd really like you to register as soon as possible so that I can get some information out to you. The cost is only $10, which is really, really great. This is going to be a great way to connect with others too. This is a time when we need connection more than ever. So please register and I look forward to doing this course with you. Hey family, I'm just getting ready to take my bin out. Bin day's not until tomorrow, but it's always good to be prepared, especially when you've got an opportunity to get outside and say hey to the neighbours. If you joined us in Kids Church yesterday, don't forget to send us your bin videos. If you're in primary school or younger, hey, welcome. It's always good to worship together. Now is your opportunity to click on the link in the description and join us over in Kids Church. 
Just like the adults today, we're talking about Easter Sunday. In this next song, we will be taking communion. So I invite you to get ready. i 
What an absolute privilege it is to worship together, church. As we approach this table, I'm just going to read from Philippians 2, which says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you looking to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. You hid in glory in creation, now
Well, good morning. Happy Easter. What a fantastic day Resurrection Sunday is. You know, I was awoken recently at around about 4 a.m. with the phrase of a song going through my mind. The phrase was, up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. How good is that? Jesus Christ is alive. Amen, 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 and praise the Lord. You know, I find it really valuable to speak out and to sing out the truth of the resurrection of Christ because it gives me hope. You know, we're in an uncertain season at the moment, a season of coronavirus, and many people are concerned, many people are fearful, yet we know that God is at work in these dark times. God is able to bring good out of this situation. I mean, I'm hearing many stories of people in their families having an enriching time. Sure, there's extra pressures because the kids are home from school, but there's some great times being held in family gatherings, in terms of in the home. There's uh, better relationships. There's not racing off to uh, work or racing your kids off to sport or to practice or to other events that you'd normally race off to. You're not watching football all weekend because it ain't on. It's an opportunity to almost come back to what we call the simple life, a time of lingering and a time of relaxing. But there are still some dark times. I mean, financially, some of you may be going through some terrible times. Businesses are closing down. People are losing jobs. Sure, there is government help, but it's still a tough time. It's a stressful time financially for some. There is sickness. There are people who are struggling with different sickness, not necessarily coronavirus, but there's sickness. There is isolation and there's fear. There's separation from loved ones. And friends, yes, friends still do have incurable illnesses. And there are people that we know dying, not necessarily of the virus, but they are dying still. And so this is a time this is a time to trust God because God is really the only secure, solid, rock-solid foundation that we have to put our faith in. You know, trust is very specific. To say trust God, that's a bit, bit tough at times, but it's very specific. So if, if you're going through financial stress, then you trust God in the financial area. If you're going through personal stress, whether it be health or relationships, then you trust God in those areas. Whatever it is specifically that you're struggling with, they're the areas that God says, hey, trust me, I'm with you in this. I've got you. We trust in the one who said, I'm going to die and I'm going to rise again. And praise the Lord, Jesus Christ did that. The only one to have done that. The king is alive. And that is why there is hope. Not a hope so, but a reality. Hope based on reality. The reality of the risen Christ. You know, for me, it's a reminder that God can do the impossible. You know, a while back, I was in a prayer time with uh, one of my friends. And I was uh, praying out some of my woes and some of my concerns, some of the things that were causing me anguish. And my friend stopped me and he said, Hey, David, God's just asked me to ask you a question. I said, All right, well, what's the question? And he said, God said to me, Ask David, have I ever let him down? And I said, Well, the correct answer is no. But it hasn't always felt like that. And yet in that, God reminded me very clearly that I've got you, David. Take a look back over your life. Have I ever let you down? No. Hasn't always worked out as I wanted, but he's never let me down. And so therefore God is saying, I will never let you down. I've got you. We're in this together. I'm big enough to deal with whatever you're going through. Trust me in this. You know, when Jesus Christ was on this earth, he brought hope to so many people. 
He transformed their lives. You know, he touched the untouchable. He touched lepers and he healed them. He healed the sick. Paralytics, blind, deaf. Some had been like that for their whole life. And he transformed them miraculously. He raised the dead. He exercised demons out of demon-possessed people. He did miracle after miracle. And so for many, many of the people in Jesus' day, their world came to a crashing halt when he was crucified. They lost hope. They lost hope. I mean, Jesus was the best person they ever knew. He was kind. He was compassionate. He was full of love. And he also had authority. He spoke with authority, but he also did miracles with authority. His actions spoke about authority. He was their king. He was the one who was going to replace the Romans. He was their big hope. He was their hope for life. Even in John 16, we read this verse. Jesus said, I have told you all these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, take courage. I have overcome the world. So Jesus is saying, you're going to have problems in this world. It's going to happen. But I've given you peace. Peace. Don't sabotage that. And yet these guys are saying, yeah, sure, but you're dead. You're dead now. How on earth is this going to work out for us? But we know. We know up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. We know that as a reality. How good is that? You know, I want to read a story that uh, some of you would know from John chapter 20. It's the story of uh, Mary, Mary Magdalene, coming to the tomb to embalm the body of Jesus. So let's read from verse 11. You can read it along with me on your screen. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And at that point she must have grabbed hold of Jesus because Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told, him, and she told them that he had said these things to her. What an awesome story. You know, Mary Magdalene was a follower of Jesus. Her life had been completely transformed by Jesus. And this brief interaction that Mary had changed her life totally. It certainly changed her day anyway. She was on a roller coaster of emotions. Started with despair and sadness and hopelessness. The Messiah has died. And it turned into wonder. Surprise, hope, joy. Wow, Jesus is alive. I've seen him. She went from despair to hope, then to overwhelming joy. Really, this joy, Jesus Christ is alive. He has risen. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. 
the king is alive. She knew that. She experienced Jesus that day. And you know, he is alive today. He brings hope into situations. So no matter how bad your situation is, Jesus Christ brings hope into that. It doesn't mean that it'll always work out nice on this earth. It doesn't mean it'll always work out how you want it to. But Jesus Christ brings hope. It may be in the form of peace in the midst of all that is going on. God reminds us, I've got this. I've got this. And also, it reminds us afresh that eternity is a reality that we can trust in. And when we leave this earth, if we're a Christ follower, we will spend eternity with Jesus. How good is that? You know, I love the fact that Mary, Mary was the first person to see the empty tomb. She was the first person to see the risen Christ. Mary's a woman. In those days, the women were the least. They were put down. And yet Jesus, in all of his life and ministry, elevated women. He treated them with respect. He honoured them. He listened to them. He engaged with them. And Mary Magdalene was one of these women. And she was the first person to run off with the good news of the gospel. She ran to the disciples with the good news. The first gospel messenger that we hear about is a woman. Mary is a messenger of hope. You know, you too have experienced God's messengers of hope. Who was a messenger of hope for you? Who by their actions revealed the hope and the love of Jesus to you? Who revealed the reality of Jesus' death and resurrection to you for the first time? Make sure you take some time to thank them and to appreciate them and to bless them. Good morning, church. It's so great to be able to share with you this morning. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about what um, my family's been going through in the last couple of months. Um, many of you might be aware that Ben was diagnosed with motor neuron disease um, in February, early February. Um, so we've been getting our heads around what that means and um, yeah, what our next steps are to help him. Um, but I just want to say thank you to the church community and so many people who have just helped us out during this last couple of months with meals, with messages, um, with bringing us things that we need. Um, we're so thankful to you all. Um, it means so much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting emotional. Um, but yeah, just be encouraged to continue to love on others um, in the community. Um, we don't always know what people are going through, um, but we know that we can love them and that we can give them the hope of Jesus um, Yeah, through caring for them. Um, and yeah, I was just really encouraged by this verse that I read recently. Um, it's from Romans 15 verse 13. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, so yeah, I just encourage you to think on that verse and to use it in your life through um, helping others, that through the Holy Spirit working in you, that you could be a hope to those around you during this um, coronavirus and during um, just the different struggles that people are going through in their lives. And I, I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart <laughs> for all the help um, you've been to my family. And, yeah, I can't wait to see you all um, as we come to an end of this virus. But, yeah, thank you so much. You know, back in January... I had come back from holidays and I went into the office, the church office, on my day off just for half an hour to pick up some stuff and to start, leave some stuff there. And when I was there, our receptionist came in and she said, Oh, David, there's uh, a young lady on the phone who wants to talk to a priest. And my first reaction was, I'm not meant to be here. I, I don't want to talk to anyone. And I said to her, No, that's okay. Put her through. And Nina was on the other end of the phone call, and Nina's given me permission to share this story. And Nina was a young married lady who was going through some fairly dark stuff. It was a fairly tough time for her. She was, she was discouraged in a lot of areas, and just, you know, the things were overwhelming her. And she just wanted to talk to someone and get some, uh, get some direction. And so I was able to listen to her, I was able to encourage her, I was able to talk with her a bit. 
And, uh, and then I just said, do you mind if I pray for you? And I prayed for her over the phone. And after I'd prayed, she was in tears. And I said, tell me, what's, what's happening? And she said, I'm just so aware of the peace of God. And I said, well, it's definitely not me. It's God that's done that for you. And I was able to then connect her with one of the ladies from our church, Raylene. And Raylene subsequently met with her several times and was able to lead her into a deep, rich relationship with Jesus. And Nina's life changed. She got a fresh hope. And she started coming along to our church services and was just overwhelmingly touched every time until coronavirus hit and then she's online. So Nina, if you're watching online this morning, God bless you heaps. You know, my encouragement is follow the Holy Spirit prompts. Sometimes they're very evident and sometimes they're, they're not so evident. I could have not taken that phone call and look what would have happened. We would have missed out on a story of hope being realised. You know, I was talking to someone who relayed a story about a, ch a sports chaplain this week. And obviously uh, many of the sporting clubs throughout Australia are going through tough times, from very high level right down to the grassroots level of sport. There's, uh, there's no sport. And particularly in the high level uh, sports, there's had to be a lot of uh, firing of workers. And one chaplain was involved in a high profile sporting club uh, not in Perth, Western Australia, over east. And uh, their club had had to sack all of their workers except the CEO. And so the chaplain rang the CEO to see how he's going. And as he engaged with this person, he just said, hey, how are you handling all of this? And he said, it is terrible. He said, this is the worst day of my life. He said, I can't believe how bad I feel in all of this. He said, I feel responsible. I feel guilty. I, I just, it's, it's awful. And so the chaplain was able to encourage him and to pray for him. And at the end of that, the CEO said to him, you know, you are the only person to have called me. The only person to have called him. It's not rocket science, is it? So take some time to pray for the chaplains. Pray for the sports chaplains. This is peak season for these guys. Pray for the youth care chaplains, the ones who are involved in schools. Pray for the aged care facility chaplains. Pray for the ones involved in health care and pray for all those in health care. I mean, they are sacrificing much to be on the front line, to be messengers of hope. And for you, continue to be a messenger of hope. Continue to live out the good news. Continue to take the good news to people. It doesn't always require a lot of sacrifice. You know, about a month ago, I was walking around our streets uh, in the suburb in which I live, and I, I saw a neighbour coming towards me, and his name was Mike, and he lives around the corner. And my normal conversation with Mike when we cross, when we're walking, is, Hi, Mike. Hello, David. And that's it. We keep going. So this morning, that morning, I said, Hi, Mike. And he says, Hello, David. And as we crossed, I felt the Spirit say, stop and talk to him. So I just stopped and we talked at a distance. And we engaged and I just asked him about how it was going. How was the cancer treatment going? How was his wife dealing with all of this? How was he dealing with all of this? And we talked for probably 15 minutes. And then we turned to go. He went, we went different directions. And as he went, he turned back and he said, hey, David, stop. Thanks for stopping to chat to me. Really appreciate it. And I thought, wow, it's not rocket science, is it? You know, you have your own stories of hope. That God has brought hope into your life in very dark situations. It may have been miraculously, it may have been through a person, but he's brought hope into your life when things seem pretty dark. Take some time to thank God for those times. And you also have been messengers of hope. You know, that's fantastic. Keep doing it. You know, life on earth is pretty unfair at times. Very unfair. There's pain, there's suffering, there's death. But the reality is we live in a fallen world. But the good thing is that God is super fair. And God is able to do far more than we can ask or imagine. 
Jesus Christ is alive, which means peace and hope is available to us in the midst of the fallenness of our world. But also, there is an eternity. There is heaven, but we're not there yet. We're still in this dirty, dying, fallen world. You know, I love watching football, whether it be uh, live or on TV. And I love the, the experiences where your team is six goals up and there's five minutes to go in the game. The siren hasn't gone yet. The game's not finished. But you know we've got this. You know we've won. Even though the siren hasn't gone, we've won this. And you get really excited. And there's a relaxing of pressure. There's joy because you don't have to worry about the result. In the same way. There is hope on this earth, this fallen world, because we know the siren hasn't gone yet. Life on this planet hasn't come to an end yet for you or for me. But when it does, we have eternity. If you're a Christ follower, we have eternity with Christ. You know, I turned 65 last week. 65, for goodness sake. 65 is old. And it got me reflecting on a lot of things. One thing it got me reflecting on, on where has the time gone? 65 years. And it made me realise, you know, time is short. Time is short. So it reminded me of keep investing in things that will outlast me. Keep investing in people. Keep investing the gospel into people's lives. Because eternity is forever. And it also got me thinking about being thankful. You know, I went back over all of the things that God had done in my life and the people that he brought into my life. I wrote them all down and I went through them and I just thanked God for them. You know, the great thing about thankfulness is it reminds us of what we have rather than what we don't have. It reminds us of all the good things that are in our life rather than all the bad things that we might have in our life. It's a great thing because it also causes hope to flourish. When we think about the things that we're thankful for, hope flourishes. So my encouragement, keep close to God. He's the source of hope. Focus on Jesus. A reminder that Jesus is head over every power and authority. He's top dog. He's the boss. He's almighty, king of kings, lord of lords. And take time to reflect on the hope that Jesus Christ has brought into your life. Thank him. And thank the people who are his messengers of hope to you. And at the same time, can I encourage you, be proactive. Be proactive. Be a proactive messenger of hope for other people. Even the simplest way makes a difference. You know, I love the verse from Romans 15, verse 13, where it says, May you, the God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in you, so that we can overflow with hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. You know, my encouragement is that we would be hope dispensers, overflowing with hope constantly, constantly overflowing with hope. And I'm so thankful that many of you that I know are doing this. You know, this morning, as you watch this, you're watching it, you may be a, a member of our church, a part of our church family at live streams. You may be someone who was involved in the church many years ago. May this be an encouragement to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. But may you continue to put yourself in a position where you experience the hope of Christ. And you may be a person here this morning, you're not a, church, a Christ follower. You're not really believing some of this, maybe all of this. I just want you to know several things. One is that Jesus Christ loves you. And he demonstrated that love by dying on the cross for you. I want you to remind you again is also that Jesus Christ is alive and he wants you to experience his resurrection life as well. You know, at the end of John chapter 20, the verses that I read before, they make this statement. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in the book of John. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. 
You see, everything about Jesus is life. That's what he's on about. He wants you to experience life. So my encouragement, if you're not a a Christ follower, read the book of John. It's written for you. Talk to people who you know are Christ followers and say, how do I get in on this? Contact us at the church. We would love to engage with you. And remember again, up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. I would love to pray for you at this point. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity to remember not only the death but the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we thank you that Jesus Christ is alive. We thank you that his life brings hope into our lives. And Father, I want to pray for everyone who's watching this today. I want to pray that they experience the fullness of the life that you promise. I want to pray that they trust you in whatever areas they're struggling in. And I want to pray that they're very open to you ministering into their life in a new and a fresh way. We pray this in the beautiful, strong, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Enjoy Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords. Have a fantastic day. God bless you heaps. Thanks, David, for your message. And thank you for joining us online. If you would like to take the next step in your spiritual journey, here's a couple of ways that you can respond. If you would like to find out more about Jesus, then we would love you to go to the Meet Jesus link in the comments below. If you need some prayer, text the number on the screen. And if you would like to take the next step in your spiritual journey, again, click on the link below. Well, church, it's been great to share together. Have an awesome day. Love you. God bless. And we're in this together. Here we go, everyone. Happy Easter. Happy Jesus is alive. Three, two, one. Easter to everyone out there. Hope yeah. this brought you some joy. Big important time of the year for us as Christians celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Heron, got anything to add? Catch you next week, folks.